Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight. O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Go and tell the joyful news. Our text for today, Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. Matthew 11, 4, 5, and 6. On this third Sunday of Advent, known as Joy Sunday, when we light the third candle in the Advent wreath, and note we lit the pink candle today. Pink symbolizing joy. Our reading today mentions that John was in prison. The one who had come to prepare the way for God's Messiah, God's anointed one, was languishing in jail. It's important to remember on this day the case against John and what led to his imprisonment. We read in chapter 14 of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, for Herod had taken John and put him in prison. It was because of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip. For John had said to him, it is not lawful for you to have her. He would have killed John, but he was afraid of the people. The people thought John was one who spoke for God. So there we have it. John dared to speak truth to power. He fearlessly reproved Herod, denouncing the marriage between Herod and Herodias. The story is that Herod, who was the sub-king or the king, divorced his wife in order to marry his brother's wife. And John denounced that. John spoke to Herod about that, reproving him for what he had done. In chapter 6 of his gospel, Mark tells his readers, John the Baptist had said to Herod, it is wrong for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias became angry with him. She wanted to have John the Baptist killed but she could not. Herod was afraid of John. He knew he was a good man and, and right with God. And he kept John from being hurt or killed. In fact, Mark tells us that Herod liked to listen to John preach. But when he did, he became troubled. So friends, John, one of God's greatest servants, went to prison. Not because he did something wrong, in fact, because he sided with the right. He called out the wrong that he saw in Herod. John, you see, came to fulfill God's purpose. His loyalty was to the king of kings. 
and not to this sub-king or this king Herod. His loyalty was not to some earthly politician or someone who was appointed by the emperor. His loyalty was to God. He came as a representative of God's kingdom. No wonder Herod was afraid of John. And it's interesting that though he, he feared John, he still liked to listen to what John had to say. And nevertheless, my friends, Herod eventually had John beheaded at the instigation or the prompting of his wife Herodias, who was always, who always had it in for John. She didn't like what John was saying about her marriage to Herod. And she always wanted John out of the way, off the sea. And she finally got away. The opportunity presented itself once on Herod's birthday, when her daughter danced so elegantly before Herod. And he made a promise to her that he would give her anything she wanted. And urged by her mother Herodias, she told Herod, give me the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And that's how John's life ended. Herod, though a bit reluctant, because of his promise to Herodias' daughter, allowed the execution of John, the beheading of John, and presented that head to her on a plate. What a way that this great servant of God's life came to an end. While in prison and before his, his death, John sent messengers to inquire whether Jesus was the Messiah. Once he heard what Jesus was doing, he sent messengers to find out, are you the one who is to come or, or should we wait for another? And it is strange that John would ask such a question when in fact he came to prepare the one, the way for Jesus. And he was the one who said, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Now, as a prisoner, he sends messengers to find out whether Jesus was really the one. Now, it has been suggested that John might have been overcome with some doubt that he was probably becoming somewhat disillusioned while in prison. Hence his inquiry about Jesus. And on this Joy Sunday, we remember that there are people in this world who suffer from disillusionment. People who have lost hope. People who live in despair. We remember all such people on this day. And it is suggested that perhaps John was in a bad mood, as it were. In a gloomy mood. That he was on the verge of, of losing faith, losing confidence, losing hope. Other commentators say that it wasn't so much for John's sake that he sent his disciples to Jesus, but it was for their own sake. That John knew who Jesus was, but he wanted to be sure that his messengers or his disciples had their faith in Jesus confirmed. However that might be, my sisters and brothers, and we trust that John never lost his faith in Jesus. We trust that his faith was, was bolstered and that his confidence in Jesus was renewed once he received the message. 
But however we take it, John's question prompted an important response from Jesus. A response that was conveyed to John through the messengers. A response of hope and joy. It is a message about the healing of the sick. Go tell John what you see and hear, Jesus says. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. Throughout his ministry, friends, Jesus healed people who were afflicted by various diseases. And it is good and joyful news to tell that Jesus has the power to heal. That Jesus has power over disease. That we can look to Jesus and, and trust Jesus for healing. And so all who need healing today, the joyful news that we share in this season of Advent is that healing is possible. It is also a message about the raising of the dead. Jesus says to the messengers that came to him, go tell John that the dead are raised. And when you look at the ministry of Jesus, you will see that Jesus raised individuals from the dead. There's a story of Jesus raising the son of a widow from the dead while they were taking him out to, to the burial place. Jesus touched his coffin and raised him from the dead. We all know that Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. When he was dead and buried for four days, Jesus raised him from the dead. He raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. That 12-year-old girl who had fallen ill, became gravely ill, and who died according to the Gospels. Jesus raised her. So the good and joyful news that we have to share, my friends, is that in Jesus, resurrection is possible. Death is swallowed up in victory. He came to bring life in all its fullness. In Christ Jesus, we have the promise and hope of eternal life because he is the conqueror of death because God raised him from the dead. We have the assurance that death does not have the last word. God has the last word in Jesus Christ. So that is the joyful news that we have to share. And sometimes, you know, friends, People look at this raising of the dead in a different way. And we think of it as those who might be dead in sin and trespasses. That Jesus has the power to raise those who are dead in their sins to new life. For we know that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. It is a message about the preaching of good news. Jesus said to those who came to him from John, go tell John the poor have good news brought to them. Did you know that the Greek word translated gospel means good news? The gospel, my friends, is good news. Whenever the gospel is proclaimed, it is a message of hope that the future can be different from and better than what it is now or what it was in the past. 
It is a message of hope, a message that contains good news. And Jesus is always associated with good news. You know, in, in, in this world, we need good news. There's so much bad news. In fact, I don't know why bad news seems to, 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 to gain so much interest. But you turn on the radio, you, you turn on the television, and there's so much bad news. Aren't you tired of some of the bad news that you hear? Yep. Mm -hmm. Aren't you eager for some good news? Yep. Yes. Well, the good news, my friends, we have it in Jesus Christ. Amen. It is that good news that the angel announced to the shepherds. When Jesus was born, he said, do not be afraid. How many of us are living in the grip of fear? And the good news is that we need not be afraid. I bring you good news, the angel said, that will cause great joy for you and all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you, he is the Messiah, the Lord. That was the message that the angel announced to the shepherds. And you know what? The shepherds dropped everything that they were doing. And they said, let us now go quickly to Bethlehem and see this thing that the angel has made known to us. Good news, my friends. Good news for all the bad news that bombards us. And finally, it is a message about the blessing for those who believe in Jesus. Hear what Jesus says to those messengers that came to him from John. Blessed are those who take no offense at me or in me. Here, Jesus pronounces a blessing on those who do not see him as a stumbling block and see him for who he truly is, the Messiah, the Son of God, who came to save people from their sins. To deliver us from those things that are stumbling blocks to us. Yes, it is strange how sometimes we, we see Jesus as the stumbling block. Rather than seeing our sins as, as the things that trip us up. That cause us to experience life not in its fullness. And Jesus has come to remove those stumbling blocks. And so he says here to John, Blessed are those who take no offense at me, who do not see me as a stumbling block, but who see me in the right way, as the promised one of God, as the Savior. You shall name him Jesus, because he will save his people. From their sins is the message that Joseph heard from the angel. And so, my friends, it is a blessing and joy to be on Jesus' side and not on the side of those who oppose him. It is a blessing and a joy to accept Jesus and not be offended at him because when we are offended at Jesus, when we see Jesus as a stumbling block, then we will miss out on the blessing that Jesus can bring into our lives. So joy comes to those who are not offended at him, but those who accept what he offers, who listen to his teaching and are guided by what he says. So, the invitation today, my friends, is to come to Jesus and find that true joy because he is the source 
of real joy. Someone showed me this morning her sweater. J-O-Y. Joy. And I said, joy means Jesus first, yourself last, and others in between. J-O-Y, J-O-Y, that must surely mean Jesus first, yourself last, and others in between. J-O-Y, J-O-Y, that must surely mean Jesus first, yourself last, and others in between. So come to Jesus, the true joy giver, the one who gives us joy, the one who satisfies us forever, a joy that nothing can change this Christmas and in the coming year and all the years of your life, find Jesus, the true source of joy, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.